Welcome everyone. We're gonna have some fun. Did anybody think they could tell me what are the three things that you listen with? What are the three things that you listen with? So we got eyes and ears. Anybody know the third? This is hard. Eyes and ears for sure, definitely. A lot of kids will say your mouth, definitely not your mouth. Uh, anybody wanna take a, take a guess? It's okay to be wrong, we love mistakes, yeah. Body language Body is good, language. good try, it's close. Okay. I like that answer. Anybody else wanna give it a try? We're embracing mistakes today. Your heart, you listen with your heart. So your ears, your eyes, and your heart. So you guys are gonna do a little listening right now. The first thing is, when I say go, you're going to walk. All you're gonna do is walk. And when I say stop, all you're gonna do is stop. We can handle that, right? All right, let's see. Go. Keep moving, guys. And stop. And go. And stop. And stop. Ah, pretty good. I usually get all the little kids with that one. Now we're gonna switch it up. When I say go, you're gonna stop. And when I say stop, you're gonna go. Go. Stop. When I say clap, you're gonna clap once. We'll practice. Clap. I love it. You guys are doing awesome. When I say name, you're gonna say your name. So my name is Coach Billy, so I would say Billy. You're not gonna say Billy though. You're gonna say your name, nicely. Let's practice. Name. Name. Clap. Go. Stop. If you're walking already and I say clap or name, just continue to walk. Now we're gonna switch it up. Name and clap are different. They're opposite. So when I say clap, you're gonna say your name. When I say name, you're gonna clap. When I say go, you stop. When I say stop, you go. Here we go. Ready? Clap. Coach, I don't think we got anybody with this yet. I'm impressed. I'm we not got some lie active you. listening right now. I'm impressed. Can everyone, can you all give me an air five? Put your hands in the air. Give me an air five on three. One, two, One, three. Two, three. <laughs> Love it. Ready? Come on, we're not too old to ever play these kind of games. Come on. Ready? <laughs> go. So, we're gonna add two more things. Don't hate me for this one. When I say jump, you're gonna do a jump. Just easy jump. Jump. When I say dance, you're gonna do a quick little dance. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. I, I know I see a lot of dancers in here. <laughs> Let me see you dance real quick, dance. Just a little wiggle, just a little wiggle. <laughs> there we go, get into it, I love it. Clap and name are still opposite. Clap and name are still opposite. Ready? And so is uh, go and stop. Go. Stop. Clap. Name. Clap. Stop. Go. Jump. Dance. Clap. Name. Go. Clap. <laughs> All right, good job, guys. You guys can have a seat. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you guys so much. A little warm up for you, a little warm up for us. You guys are too good. I couldn't get any of you. Unbelievable. Now I know where all your kids get it from. Awesome job, awesome job. My name is Coach Christos. Uh, I'm a physical education teacher. Uh, got my bachelor's degree at, at Queens College. Attended Brooklyn College. Uh, got my master's in sports management. And also have uh, my degree in ed educational leadership as well. Teaching in Queens for about uh, seven years. Uh, coaching for 10 years. So a lot of experience coaching, working with kids around this age. Uh, this is my partner, Coach Billy. Coach Billy, you can introduce yourself. Yeah, so I've been a uh, PE teacher for seven or eight years now uh, in private schools and public school. I'm in a public school now in Queens. I have my uh, bachelor's and master's also in PE, and I'm trying to get my health certificate actually as we speak. Um, but yeah, I've also do a lot of, I've been coaching basketball since, I, since high school. Um, I've been working for my cousin's company actually, Hoops 101. Some of you know of it. Uh, he, that program is amazing for hoops and, and we've done a lot of this kind of stuff in PYA and PAL and, and we've, me and both me and Coach Chris have run it. Uh, now we just decided like a year ago to start our own company. So, uh, you know, we're new and we're trying to, uh, you know, we're trying to, to get it going. So this is, this is great. This is going to be fun this year. I'm excited for this. Uh, our company is called Sportify. We come, we offer coaching support to different teams. Uh, we coach a little bit of flag football, 
basketball, soccer, tennis. We offer private sessions as well. So we're here to uh, help support you guys uh, with Booster Basketball and give you the tools you need so that you can be successful uh, when coaching on your own as well. The first bullet here on uh, building a positive culture. I mean, that's what we're all about, right? These kids are gonna learn, they're gonna learn a lot. So yelling at kids, we've noticed, I mean, for our experience, you know, you see some teachers that yell at their kids all day long. Um, and by the end of the year, the kids are just like, I, I don't care what you have to say. Like, I've heard you yell already. <laughs> it's, there's nothing new here, you know? So our, our whole plan is to, is to just keep it positive all the time through all of these different uh, bullets that we have here. Shouting it out there, what does a positive culture look like for you? If you're, if, you're, if you're watching a team with a positive culture, what does that look like? Kids are having fun. Kids are having fun. What are they doing? Supporting each other. Supporting each other. Just shout it out. You can shout it out. Positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement. That's really huge. Positive energy. Anything else? All right. We pretty much got it. Positive energy, positive reinforcement, communication, teamwork, building a relationship, right? The, the kids need to have a relationship with you so that they're, they're, they're going to listen to you, right? So that's number one. What does a negative culture look like? What does it look like? What is the coach doing most of the time? He's just... He's just yelling, right? And that really uh, steers kids away from wanting to actually learn. So that's something that we don't want. We want positive reinforcement and we can do it in different ways, right? So one thing that we do with, with our groups is we say point to a friend. So everyone would point to a friend and on three we go, I see you. So if you shout out somebody, you just yell it out. You say, I see you. So everyone do that for me right now. Point to a friend right now, point to a friend, point to anyone next to you and say, I see you. You could feel the energy in the room. It just changes, right? So when we, when we coach your, your athletes, when we're with you in a group, we're all about keeping that positive momentum uh, throughout the entire lesson. Some, some management techniques for behaviors is by setting very high expectations. So as a coach, think about what expectations you set, you set for your students or your athletes, right? Think about them. Active listening, respect, thank you. Having fun, learning. Uh, what if kids are talking over you? What, what, what's something that you can do to, get, to grab their attention? Ready? I'll give you some. Clap once if your eyes are on me. Everyone try that. Ready? Clap once if your eyes are on me. Clap twice if you can hear my voice. Very simple techniques just to grab the attention. You're never really singling someone out. I'm not gonna go to Matt and be like, hey Matt, uh, you're doing the wrong thing. I'm gonna say, hey, I love how this group is ready on this side. Uh, look, how, look how nicely they're sitting, hugging the ball. Let's see who else is ready, right? We didn't say anything negative in that situation because what we notice is, is that once you are negative, it kind of drains the energy in the room, right? So you want to focus on the positive, the kids that are doing uh, the right thing. Also setting up logical consequences. So a uh, logical consequence would be like, hey, if, if, you're do if you're doing something wrong and you say, I'm going to take, take this basketball away from you, right? And you don't do that, then that kid knows, hey, that consequence doesn't exist, right? So you want to make sure uh, when you have a consequence, you, you follow through and you say, all right, I got to take this ball away uh, for two minutes. I'm going to keep your ball. When you look ready, you'll get it back. Very simple. If you have a couple of kids sitting there not, not listening and you praise one kid for doing a good job, you'll be surprised. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy, actually. All of the kids then will right like this, right away. As soon as you go, oh, little Timmy, good job, man. I love how you're sitting there. Every other kid, right away. It's, it's, it's pretty impressive actually how, how easy that is and how well that works. And praising people for like doing a skill right or um, if they're doing it wrong, giving them a glow first, right? So like giving them positive feedback first, saying, you know, I loved how you bend your knees. That was awesome. Next time, try to hold your follow through. Or next time, you know, you're dribbling it really well, you're dribbling really fast, but next time try to get it below your elbow or try to get it lower when the defender's near. Whatever it is, you know, that's something that you guys are going to be there also watching and, and making sure that, uh, you know, you're giving them the proper feedback. But giving, the, giving that grow, that glow first before the grow definitely helps them understand what's going on and, uh, you know, makes them want to keep going. You know, if everyone keeps getting these, these you keep telling students all, or, or, or players all the time, like, hey, you know, you're not doing this right, you're not doing this right, you're not doing this right, that their morale and their confidence is going to be down. They're not going to feel like they're doing anything right. So I want to speak about modeling, right? Uh, when, you, when you have a, an athlete 
come up to demonstrate, right? It's important to demonstrate the skill correctly, but it's also important to demonstrate the entire skill. So you demonstrate the entire skill, what to do before you start, and also how you end, right? So like, for an example, if the cone is right here, right, and I'm shooting, let's say, a free throw, one dribble, knees bent, eyes up, elbow in, follow through, right? I get my rebound. If, if, if the drill says, okay, make sure you demonstrate a bounce pass when you get your rebound to your partner, right? You demonstrate the entire skill so that you don't have any confusion uh, as, as, the, as, the, as the practice progresses, right? A lot of coaches, they just show the layup, the kids hit the layup, and then afterwards they don't know what to do next, and then that's where they misbehave. I make this mistake a lot, actually, in a lot of my practices because what I like to do is, I, I, you know, I want to get them to everything. I want them to know every single thing that they can, right? I want them to learn every single skill and I want it to go quick, I want it to go quick. The problem is, is that when you try to go too quick and you're not demonstrating it and taking the time and having the kids sit and listening, it just, it actually backfires and it goes backwards, right? So taking the time to really make sure that they understand what's going on uh, is important. You know, it's very important and, and they're gonna get more out of it. You know, if you're rushing through and you're using terms that they have no idea what you're talking about, I see it all the time. I see coaches saying, from the sideline going, hey, go for the layup, go for the layup. Kids have no idea what a layup is, no idea. They're looking at him like, I, I don't know what that means. Like, I don't know what that is yet, you know? So there's a lot of terms that you may know that, you know, they have no idea what it is. Uh, and taking that time to really explain that to them and have them understand it will help them. There's a whole bunch of learning processes that, that you need to be able to hit as a coach, right? You need to do the full demonstration. You need to, uh, you need to show them, you need to give them the cues to perfect them. And as we go on through the season, uh, Coach Billy and I will model these lessons for you and you'll be able to uh, basically reenact some of the stuff that we do, all right? And, and keep it in the same routine. So whatever routine that we're using, I mean, if you absolutely hate the routine and you have to change it, change it. But then if you change it, right, and you're going on to, to, to change it, keep it that way. Right, so when kids come in, keep it kind of the same. We always go to the sideline or we always go to the middle. Whatever it may be, uh, just, just try to keep the routine the same. Maybe do dribbling first always or passing first or passing second, however it is that you wanna do it, but just keep it the same. So children, children get, you know, they understand where they're going next and, and it kind of helps them as well. Um, throughout the season, we're working on fundamental skills. Uh, a lot of uh, K and one coaches are here. Are there any grade two coaches here? Grade two, grade three, right? Okay, as well. Uh, all these grades, fundamental skills are the most important thing. It's the most important thing to, to go over. Uh, strategy c could come later, right? But if you, if you focus on the fundamentals, then uh, as, as the child gets older, they're gonna progress at a faster rate. Every kid in here is gonna have a ball. Every, ki every kid in here is gonna learn footwork. Every kid is going to be dribbling, passing, shooting. Right, so they're, they're gonna get enough repetitions in so that uh, when it's time to actually play in the game, they can apply all these skills uh, in a modified game or an actual game at some point, all right? You know, another thing that a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of parents and, and people may not know that, that we, you know, we are constantly told about in PDEs and stuff like that for PE is uh, when you can, you know, have kids, like he just said, have everyone going, as many kids as you can going, right? When kids are standing online, it creates uh, problems where the kids start fooling around or they're bored or they start pushing each other or they start throwing the ball at each other or wherever it may be. Uh, you know, obviously, if there's only four hoops that are able to, for them to shoot on, that's a different story, right? You've you got to create lines and stuff like that. But as for the most part, if you have all of the children participating in these drills and these skills, right, and they're all doing dribbling and they're all passing and all of this, it'll be a lot easier for you as well. Right? It'll be a lot easier for you to manage them than if you have kids on the line waiting or kids on the line waiting for you to tell somebody something or, you know, wherever it may be. Uh, having them all participating at the same time and, and trying the skills will definitely make it easier for you. A very clear stop and go signal uh, is key. A signal, maybe a whistle, it could be a whistle, it could be anything, right? So it could be just a big freeze, right? So me and Coach Billy, we have one where we go, we tell everyone, drop. So everyone does the same exact thing in ready position. And if we need to practice that, let's say there's one or two kids that don't get it, we just, we just restart it. We're like, all right, let's practice that again. We didn't get it the first time, let's try it again. And we do it pretty much until everyone gets 
uh, everyone understands the expectation, right? And if they don't understand the expectation, we'll sit, we'll wait, we'll discuss, we'll talk about safety, we'll talk about helping each other, and uh, eventually the kids understand it, we build that positive culture, that trust, and we just keep going. Yeah, I mean, the kids don't want to sit. All right, so if you have a couple of kids who are just not listening, if everyone sits and you just go over it really quick, you know, what we expect of them and, and how safe, how we can keep each other safe and everything else, uh, they'll, they'll pretty sure they'll, they'll stop. And every once in a while, you're gonna have one or two kids who are having a really bad day, right? They, whatever it may be, maybe they had too much chocolate in the morning, whatever it is. Okay, kids are allowed to have bad days too. Uh, and, and it's really hard to control them. You know, you, you can, I, I don't advise this all the time, but you can tell them, hey, you know, go sit out for a minute. Right, go sit out for one minute and then come back in. I would say that's the absolute last resort, absolute last resort, right, is to have a kid sit out. Because once that kid sits out, that kid, that kid now knows, like, hey, you know, I was being unsafe, I'm throwing the ball when I'm not supposed to be, I'm throwing it off the wall. I'm, I don't do it all the time. But if you do it once, every other kid around is gonna be, you know, they're gonna be like, oh, I don't wanna sit out, right? I don't wanna do that. Okay, and then you just say, hey, look, you know, like, come back in, try to be safe. Uh, and then praise them. As soon as they come back in and they do the right thing, just praise them. Teachable moments, right? Every positive thing that you see, just, just stop them and say, hey, that was awesome. I loved how you did that. Right? They're going to they're gonna be like, oh, okay. They're going to feel really good, right, if you say that to them. And they look up to all you guys. So they're going to feel awesome about it. Uh, one of the biggest questions to ask, uh, like, why are we here? Why are you guys here as coaches? Can someone tell me why you're here today? You guys are all obviously here because you care. Ball is life. Well, that's a good answer. Ball is life. Another reason? <laughs> I like it. I like that. That's true. <laughs> Anyone else? What's your why? Why are you here? Why are you here coaching these kids? What do you want to instill in them? For teamwork. I love that one. Yeah, teamwork is important. For what? To build confidence, right? Huge. Anyone else? Huge. Teamwork, confidence. Yeah. Uh, basically modeling what it looks like to modeling what it looks like to, to be a good person, right? To be a good teammate, to be a good leader, right? That's why we're here. We want to be uh, basically a role model for these kids, right? So that's why we're here. That's what we want to achieve. And as coaches, that's why me and Billy started this company. That's why we, we wanted to do this, right? As far as essential questions go and checking for understanding, like just a simple, especially with the younger kids, they have a much shorter attention span. Right? So you'll be like, oh, uh, stand on this blue line over here. And immediately you need to ask, uh, what line are you going to stand on? And they're going to say blue. But you have to do that so everyone understands that. Because if you just say go to the blue line, everyone's just going to go wherever they want to go. I remember when I was becoming a PE teacher and, uh, and I was coaching for a little bit before that. And someone told me that. And I was like, that's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. There, you tell them. All right, you're gonna dribble with your left hand. All right, what hand are you dribbling with? And now, using it all the time, it's crazy how, how well it works. Like they all, some kids, and then you catch kids who, who didn't know what hand to dribble with, right? And some kids are still gonna do it wrong. There's still gonna be times when kids are still not paying attention or whatever it may be. Uh, but that checking for understanding always, like, oh, we're gonna do, we're gonna do uh, right hand layups right now. Or I want you to follow through. What do I want you to do? Follow through. Yep, that's it. Follow through, right? Just that like simple checking for understanding uh, is huge, and it gets kids kind of into it a little bit more as well. We'll, we'll add on uh, adva more advanced uh, skills as we keep going. So sometimes we start stationary, especially with kindergarten. A lot of a lot of stuff is stationary at first. Then we go in motion. Then we do stuff with a partner. We'll incorporate pivots to teach them without the ball. Right, we'll have them follow us, so everyone will be in a line uh, or in open space. We love open space, okay? And then uh, as we do it, you know, we, we model for them and we go, okay, keep one foot down, hit that foot that you're gonna keep down, and pivot, and make sure your toes are up, make sure your heels are up, right? Make sure your toes are down, I mean, and your heels are up, okay? And turn this foot first before you turn, right? So turn this foot first and then pivot. And we do that together as a group first, and then we add it into dribbling. And then we'll do it maybe with passing or maybe with a defender trying to get the ball from them. And then maybe we do a basketball, right? So we do that for all the footwork, just constantly, constantly using it that whole day, right? And then, and then the following day, review that somehow in a way, okay? So there's all of these things that, that you know, you progress and also each week just kind of keep it, keep it the same for all of the activities, right? Like keep something that 
is what your main focus is of that day. Your first week of coaching this season, right? What's the first thing you got to do with your with your athletes? What's the first thing that you, what do you think is the first thing you do? Learning each other's names, right? Because if you if I don't know your name, I can't build a relationship with you. I need to know your name, right? So know every one of your athletes uh, names. What's another thing that you got to do to have a successful practice? Ground rules, expectations are key, right? You want to set the bar really high because if you set the bar down here, they're going to perform down here. If you set the bar up here and up here, they're going to perform way up there. So set the expectations right off the bat. Set the, like, the meeting area, the circle, the logo. They can meet at the logo. That could be for everybody so they know where to, where to meet. Um, wh what does it look like? What does it sound like to be a good listener, right? That's just a simple statement that you can say even in practice. Oh, Ryan's doing a really good job right now. He's being a really good listener right now. His body's facing me, his voice is off, he's ready to go, right? Let's see who else is ready, right? So set that expectation right from the beginning of the season so that it makes your life easier in the long run. If, if, if the kids come in and they don't, they don't feel like uh, they have that expectation, they're gonna take advantage. Right, and they're gonna do. They're gonna act silly, and and, and usually uh, it distracts people. Yeah. Obviously, learn, learning a little bit about the kids, building that relationship is important, and you want to get into a routine, right? So you should have you should have a very similar routine at the beginning of every lesson, right? So that the kids are accustomed to it. It's almost it becomes natural, right? So they might be doing defensive slides. They might be doing running in open space, uh, drop pivots. They might do that every time they come in so that eventually uh, it just becomes natural and it becomes part of the program and then they just naturally get better at it. All right, so routines, expectations, uh, and a very clear stop and go signal. So I want you to go home today and be like, what's a stop and go signal that I wanna use? All right, uh, for the kids, it could be a whistle, it could be clap once if your eyes are on me, it could be uh, everyone hands on your head if you're listening. Something very simple just to get everyone's attention. Yeah, and, and personalize it, right? So it's, it's whatever you feel confident in using. You know, don't use the ones, you, you can use the ones we use, uh, but I don't always use the ones he uses, right? And he doesn't always use the one that I use. And if you were to go to other gyms and talk to PE teachers, they all have their own that fits who they are, right? So it's like kind of personalized for you. Um, and, and you know, you can use it anyway in the way that you have to get them to, to be paying attention and focusing. Um, another thing I just wanted to add really quick too is, uh, you know, I get a lot from parents um, too and, and other areas is when I'm coaching basketball is a lot of them will say like, hey, you know, like we, or kids will say this really a lot more than parents too, but you know, they're doing the same thing over and over again, right? Or, they, or they're shooting, they're shooting, they're following their shot, they're, they're shooting, they're shooting. And my whole thing is, look, it's repetitions, right? Like we're gonna teach them skills and new skills, but it's all about repetitions. Like the more shots that they can get up, right? And, and, and the more layups that they can do and the more dribbling that they do, it's better for them. That's how they're gonna really get better, right? You see on Instagram, like all of this fancy stuff that you see, like Hot Sauce and all of these guys out there who are doing these things and they look great. They look great. But if you were to go to a college basketball practice and you were to watch them, they're literally just doing the moves that they would do in the game. So if you have a player in a game that would do, you know, uh, floaters, he would just be, pra he would be practicing floaters a lot because that's what he does. But you wouldn't tell the big guy to do a floater in the game, right? So that's what they practice. They would just practice and practice the same thing over and over again. And the skills that they do aren't, aren't too far off. I mean, they could dribble faster, they can run faster, but they're really not that far off. And they're gonna be better at it, right? Because they're obviously getting a lot older than in college. But uh, they're, not, they're not that more, much more advanced than you would think. Uh, our plan was we, we bring them all in together. So there's probably two teams right on the court at the same time, is that how it's going? Two teams, right, to, to share the court. So we'd bring everybody in uh, and then we would go, we would start that way. So we would start with everybody at the same time. We would run the practice, right? And uh, the, as far as skills, uh, the other coaches that are here will help fine tune those skills. Um, as far as like, uh, as, we, as, we, as we go through the practice, right? Uh, you can write down uh, some of the activities that we're doing, uh, some of the cues that we use, our stop and go signals, our, uh, the way we communicate with the kids to ask specific questions so that we know that they're understanding what we're teaching, right? There's no point in teaching if 
no one's learning, right? So you gotta ask these really important questions. We call them essential questions in the teaching world. And uh, the, student, the, the athletes need to be able to answer them, right? That's how we know we're doing our job. If, we, if we're not able to answer these questions, then you're not doing your job, right? And, and sorry to cut you off, and feel free to ask us during the practices. Like ask us, like why'd you do that? Or what would you do here? Or what might you do next week with them? Or stuff like that. Like I'm glad to help. Like if these kids are getting a great experience, right? And you guys are giving them a great experience. Like that's, I'm all for it, you know? I'm all for it. What are some challenges you, you guys face as, as coaches? Does anyone have any, any challenges that, that they can share? Yeah. When they're not doing the activity, right? So that's where you lose kids. You lose kids when, when, when they're not doing the activity, uh, especially the younger ones, right? If they wait for too long, uh, you lost them, right? You will just lose them. But if you keep your demonstration to about one minute, one to two minutes, you still have their attention and, and you can keep it going, right? So like what I do is, again, the signals, right? I have like six different signals that I use throughout the day as I, teach, as I teach my students. I usually teach about 60 kids at a time and the gym is just full, right? And I have a, a bunch of signals, you know, just, just to, you know, everyone, like, everyone show me two big gator claps, something super silly, and they'll go one, two. Everyone pat yourself on the back right now, right? If you're doing a good job. Something very simple like that, just to grab some attention, can go a really long way, right? And then, and then the younger grades, you gotta do the demonstrations under two minutes. Demonstrate straight into the activity. If you see a problem in the activity happening, don't, don't let it keep going, because then it creates a snowball effect. And once it creates a snowball effect, then other kids start doing, making wrong choices, right? So you stop it, you bring everyone back, you reset, you set the expectation really high again, you send every, demonstrate the skill again, you send everyone back out and see, see what it looks like. And if you have to redo it again, guess what? You're doing it again. And you're gonna keep doing it. And then that's how kids get better, that's how they learn, and then they start to understand you. It, it, also, it also makes it easier for you too. I mean, if you're trying to teach them a skill and they're all over the place and you just constantly keep saying the same thing over and over again, I mean, it, it, it would just, you know, that's stressful, right? If everyone's running around all over the place and you're trying to get a kid here and you're helping this kid and that kid's over there and this kid, you know, having them come back down when you notice it is getting a little bit out of hand, just have them come sit back down. Say, look, this is what we're supposed to do. Maybe this was my fault. I didn't explain this well, but, you know, this is where, where I expect you to be or something like that. Yeah, so I always say reset nice and loud. I say re everyone reset and they all know to come back to the middle. They all know they gotta, if they're really young, they're hugging the ball nice and tight and they're sitting. Uh, if uh, they're older, they're just holding it in ready position, just, just locking eyes with me. And guess what, if they're fooling around, just take the ball away. Say, I'll give it back to you, right? Some kids get very emotional when you take the ball away. So you say, you know what? I'll give it back to you in two minutes. And then they, they'll, they'll stop crying. They'll literally stop crying. We'll just say, I'll give it back to you in two minutes. And they'll be ready to go. It's, it's that simple. Right? Did you? Yeah, what, what's, uh, what's your view on making the kids run when they're not paying attention? Not so, they like it, some coaches hate it. Uh, so, my view on it personally, I think it's just wrong, right? I'll just tell you, I'll tell you that. I think that if you're using a physical activity as a punishment, it's, you're, not doing, you're, not doing it any, you're not doing anyone a yeah, favor, gonna... right? You want the kids to enjoy physical activity. If I want, I want to tell my son, hey, you were going running, he want, I want him to be super hyped to go running. I don't want him to be like, oh, I got to do this again. So I don't think that's right at all. I think you just reset. You set the expectation really high. And as a consequence, it has to be logical, right? It can't be like, oh, you're sitting out the entire practice now because you're not listening. If I'm a kid and I know I can't play right now, I'm acting up because I know I can't play anyway. So I know that I can't play right now because coach just said, hey, I'm out the rest of the day and maybe next week. One time a kid got punished for five weeks straight and I'm like, he's not gonna listen. He's never gonna listen now, you know? Have him sit out, talk to him, have that one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one conversation and say, hey, what did you do wrong? What can you do better? And, and then take it from there and then give them a second chance. Everyone needs a second chance, right? And, and third and fourth and fifth and sixth and Oh yeah, just, you just one keep minute. going. If you have to, last resort, have to sit somebody out because they're being unsafe and you're scared they're going to hurt themselves or somebody else, right? That's when I sit people out. 
when I see people are like kicking a basketball when they should be shooting it and I keep telling them to stop and a kid almost gets hit in the face with a basketball. Right? That's when I'll say, okay, listen, you can't kick the basketball. You, you know, you gotta sit, it's unsafe for everybody. And then just a minute, a minute later, are you ready? Come back in. Right? And, and he might go kick another basketball. I don't know. It might happen. It might happen five or six Everyone times has... in one session. Yeah. But guess what? That's what we're working with. Safe. And that's what we gotta, that's what we gotta adjust to. And if you, you say know? safety to them and you tell them that, listen, this is safety, they get it. They get it. Right? They get that safety. Like I'm kicking a basketball right now. And, and if you see like an activity that you're doing and the, the athletes are disengaged, it means that it's either not challenging enough or it's just boring. Right? So you want, you want an activity that's age appropriate, right? Um, so th that also plays a big role. Like if, if, if you're telling me to do something that I know I can't do at all, guess what, I'm immediately disengaged, right? If you give me like the calculus math work and I look at it and I'm like, oh, how do I solve this? And I'm just throwing it away, you know, I don't care, right? Yeah. And if uh, they're continuously unsuccessful, like if they're continuously trying to shoot a basketball and they can't make it in, and you don't make any modifications for them, and you don't tell them, okay, if you hit the net, it counts, or if you put a, I put a hula hoops on, a, on the back of the basketball so that if the kids can't reach the younger kids, they make it in, they feel successful. Right? So if, everyone keeps, if everyone keeps messing up and not getting it, right? you wanna challenge them, but you also want them to have some success, or they're not gonna, they're not gonna wanna continue. Right? And that's, again, confidence. So Coach Billy does this thing where he says, oh, if you hold the follow through, you get a point for your team, right? So now we're just building that habit just by getting a bonus point, right? So everyone's learning, hey, I gotta hold a follow through after every shot. So like, that's the type of modification that you can make as well, right? Yeah. I think it's actually a good point. I mean, having been through this now with Andrew for a number of years with our older boys, uh, we have second graders now too. I think one of the biggest challenges with the coaching, especially at the kindergarten, first and second grade, is you have kids of wildly varying skill levels, especially in a town program. Yeah. So literally have kids, even at second grade, as Andrew will know, will come and have never touched the basketball, right? So in kindergarten, you're gonna have a lot of kids like that in first grade. Well, you have other kids who with, you know, some of us in the room who are more involved with the kids have played for a while. So you'll have kids who, you know, can't even reach a six foot hoop, let alone an eight foot hoop or a 10 foot hoop. The other kids, you know, who are jumping through their legs and, and doing, yeah. So the, I think the challenge for the coaches is, you know, how do you make it interesting and fun for everybody, right? And that's okay. like one thing that I know Andrew and I work on in particular is, you know, making sure that this, this is a town program. It's not just about the two or three or four best kids in the room. In fact, yeah. those kids don't, those kids are playing elsewhere also. They need less focus. The focus is on every, for me, I was like everybody else in the room the kids who haven't played and making sure it's all So a couple of things that like, I would do at, you know, to differentiate the instruction for kids um, at school when I don't have other parents helping, a couple of things that you might want to consider is you can put them into group, like when you do a skill, right? You could put, uh, you know, you, you group them, right? So you group them based on skill or you could go the opposite. Like there are some times where they'd be practicing dribbling and you have a kid who's really good and a kid who's just starting and you tell them like, hey, help you know like your jobs are to help each other right so this kid can show him and and guide him on what to do and give him tips and that actually has shown to have a lot of success as well so one of the best ways is to mix the groups i feel like i i notice a lot of if, when you mix the group uh someone who's very advanced and can teach the skill to appear they usually learn it even better right then then they they pretty much have mastered it in our opinion, if you, can teach, if you can teach another peer, you've mastered the skill. And going back to the differentiation, right? So you should have like a beginner, intermediate, advanced version of every skill, right? And uh, for example, like a crossover, right? Instead of actually doing the crossover or doing figure eights, you would just put the ball on the ground and do a figure eight on the floor for someone who's a beginner, just to, just to get the motion, right? Uh, again, everyone comes at a different, at a different level, and you got to meet the student exactly where they are, which is the, which is like the most difficult task as a teacher. Like we go through that every day, especially with, you know, a large, large volume of kids. Um, what, so you got to plan for that. Yeah. Another thing that you could do too is you can give them the option. So you can give them the option of where they want to go. So what I do in my school is, 
for basketball, let's say. I'll tell them like, hey, if you're feeling spicy today, right, if you're feeling spicy, you know, take, you could take a shot from back here. <laughs> if you're feeling mild today, you're not so spicy today, that's okay too, you know, I'll take a shot from here. You know, so that, and that's just one example, right? But I actually use that a lot, spicy, medium, mild, and give the, ch the children an opportunity to choose, you know, how they want to challenge themselves. Yeah, so choices are actually uh, uh, one of the best ways to manage a group. If you give students a choice, then hey, I take ownership over my learning, and therefore, guess what? I'm going to just, I'm going to follow these rules. Hey, coach just gave me a choice. Hey, I could take a shot from back here, close range, I could dribble through my legs, I can just dribble stationary in one spot and be successful, and I'm building my confidence that way, right? So always have options. It's not just one way or the highway. That doesn't work with us as adults. I don't want anyone telling me what to do as an adult, right? I'm doing my own thing. Kids think the same exact way. They want choices, they want options. And they, and they also need to understand, like if they're dribbling a skill and they're like, this is easy, you'll hear kids say that all the time, this is easy, this is easy. I try to discourage my kids from saying that, because if it's easy, if it's too easy for you, how can you make it harder for yourself? All right, if you're dribbling the ball like this, all right, if that's too easy for you, how do you make it harder? Dribble faster, dribble lower, whatever it may be, right, for that skill. Yeah, so, it, could be, it could be speed, you could, you could, you could vary uh, the skill with speed. You could vary it with distance, so passing could be further, shots could be further, right? It could be uh, timed. You could pull out your phone, start your stopwatch, say you, you need to get, for some of the older kids, I've done 300 shots. You have 300 shots to take. You just gotta shoot 300 times. We actually have a second, you know? we actually have a first grade group that we work on, work with on Sundays, um, and they put up 100 shots in, in nine minutes. They don't make them all, but we give them points for saying nice things to their teammates. We give them points for holding their follow through. But they put up 100 shots. There's two or three kids. They put up as a combined 100 shots in eight minutes. And they have no idea. They have no idea that they just put up 100 shots. All right, we go 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. They have no idea. And they just loved it. They're just trying to beat the time. And they get points for holding their follow through. And it's, it, time is, I love time. I love using time for them, for challenging and stuff. And then uh, lastly, we got a question about the size ball to use. Every kid is different, right? So some kids might need a smaller ball, like way smaller, right? Some kids might need that 27 and a half. Some kids are using the official size, right? I coach flag football, there's a kid who could throw the whole entire field and he's six, right? Which is very impressive. And then I have some kids that can't do that and that's okay, they might need a smaller ball. It's just that simple, just so that they can experience some success, right? And, and the biggest, biggest thing I think too, uh, I mean, I guess they're all big, but the biggest thing too is embracing mistakes. Like mistakes are good. Like if you're working really hard, you know, if you listen to any of these NBA players, they'll tell you, like Steph Curry said, you know, he shoots in the gym until he's uncomfortable. When, once he's uncomfortable and he's shooting, he's, he's starting to, to, to miss shots and make mistakes. That's how many shots he puts up. I don't even know how many that's gotta be. That's gotta be in the thousands for him to get uncomfortable, right? So if you're dribbling the ball and you make a mistake, but you're trying really hard and you make a mistake, that's awesome, man. I love that you were just dribbling so fast. That was great. You know, that, that, that stuff there uh, will help keep them motivated as well to, to work harder. And if you guys ever need any, uh, any, any advice or any um, drills or, you know, how to set expectations, how to create routines, you can reach out to us. We have our, our email on the, on, the, on the sheet as well. And we, we will totally, we'll, we'll give you guys a breakdown of how to go about it. If you wanna come see us, coach, you can come and see us as well. Come watch us coach and see how we, how we do things and take a few things here and there. This might work for you, this might not. Oh, I like how Coach Chris does this. I like how Coach Billy does this. I like how Coach Matt does that. And then you take a piece from every person you see and you create your own, you know, coaching persona, your character, right? We do have some, some bands for you guys. Our kids love these things. So we give our kids band, we announce player of the day at the end of every session, and player of the day basically is someone who's a good team player, someone who's respectful, kind to their teammates, someone who shows leadership, someone who demonstrates communication, nonverbal, verbal, people who support each other. That's who gets player of the day. Uh, you guys are all, you know, you guys are all coaching uh, for uh, different age levels and it's a very, very important position, right? And it comes with a lot of responsibility and, you know, you're shaping these, you're shaping people's lives at the end of the day, right? You're helping them. 
Uh, so we do want to give you guys out some bands. If you want to leave your email, we, we passed around a clipboard. You can leave your email with us. And uh, thank you all for coming. Let's all clap it up for ourselves. Clap it up for yourselves. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. We appreciate it. Yeah.